Good morning, good morning. Well, as you can see, I had to reconnect this morning. Good morning, it is Tuesday, August 4th, 2020. Good morning, Leanne, we're glad that you're here this morning. And good morning, Rick and Marlene, we're glad that you're here this morning. And <laughs> I am currently, good morning, Karen, as you can see, in a tree. And I must say, this is, the first time I've ever broadcast from a tree. Uh, good morning, Parav, and good morning, Brenda. And I must say, it's a little different. Uh, I'm, you're not going to be able to tell where I am or whose tree it is. Um, <laughs> good morning, Donna, and good morning, Tanya, and Karen, and Rob. And so I'll just give you a little perspective here. There goes the city bus. And uh, good morning, Ellen. And so I just thought, well, let's do things a little differently this morning and let's just sit in a tree. And so I'm sitting in a tree. <laughs> but it is still going to be a really good day. This just makes for a very interesting start to the day. Good morning, Joyce. And good morning, Gary. We're glad that you're joined us this morning. <laughs> yes, yes. And so we are still in this series on waiting and so the passage today is actually from Psalm 52 and David wrote the psalm if you so if you want to open your paper Bible and that's why I have my glasses on this morning is so I can actually read it um, so we're gonna we're gonna pray first before we get into the word so dear Lord Jesus thank you for today thank you that you are good and Lord, as we open your word today together, we ask that you would speak to us through the power of your Holy Spirit, opening up our hearts and minds to what your word says and help us to apply it to our lives. In your name, amen. Okay, so we are in Psalm 52 this morning and the passage is actually uh, verses four to nine. And David, King David wrote this passage uh, when Doeg the Edomite had gone to Saul and told him uh, that David has been with Abimelech, uh, Ahimelech, which was the priest at Nob. And so that story actually takes place, if you wanna flip back in your Bible in 1 Samuel, uh, first Samuel let's just see first Samuel yes turning pages in your Bible while sitting in a tree and holding your camera it's always very interesting all right so here we go so in chapter 21 uh, 22 uh, King David is fleeing or 21 and 22 King David is, David is fleeing from Saul he goes to Ahimelech uh, who's um, the priest at Nob and he says, do you have anything to eat? And do you have a sword? And Ahimelech has no idea what's going on. He believes that, you know, he's very supportive of David and the king, who's King Saul at the time. And, and he has no idea that he is fleeing, King David is fleeing from Saul. And so he gives him something to eat and gives him the sword of Goliath. And, and it says that um, at Nob, there is, let me just find it here. Uh, that Doeg, it says in verse 7, Now one of Saul's servants was there that day, detained before the Lord. He was Doeg the Edomite, uh, Saul's head shepherd. And so he heard everything that was going on between David and Ahimelech. And uh, so Ahimelech gives David and his men something to eat and the sword of Goliath, and they go on. And because David is running from Saul, because Saul's trying to kill him, because... Well... Saul is jealous and concerned that David's going to take over the kingship, but really it was Saul's own disobedience. So we transition from that scene at Nob to um, the throne room with Saul, wherever Saul is. And this is in chapter 22, uh, verse 8. It says, Now Saul had heard that David and his men had been discovered, and Saul's, uh, and Saul's spear in hand was seated under the Tamarisk tree in the hill of Gibeah. So he's with his men. And he's like, how come people are just letting David get away? Doesn't anybody care? And Doeg actually steps up and says, well, actually, he was at Nob, and the priest, this is what happened, and the priest gave him something to eat and gave him the sword of Goliath. So basically, he's tattling on, on David. And some people have said that 
basically he was trying to get in good with the king because uh, what happens is Saul calls Ahimelech and the priests uh, to basically give an account and Ahimelech is like um, I have no idea what's going on and Saul's like you're letting my enemies rise up against me like you are in cahoots with them and so he orders his men Saul's men to kill him and Saul's men are like we're not gonna kill the priests Doeg steps up kills all the priests kills um, all the the entire city including all the animals and some people feel that it's to get in good with Saul right he was trying to advance his own estate with Saul and so this is where chapter or Psalm 52 comes in all right because basically he is like what is going like David is David is mad because what happens is one guy gets away from the slaughter at Nob and comes and tells David and he says I knew when I saw Doeg there that he was gonna tell Saul like he knew and so he writes this psalm and it says why do you boast of evil you mighty man why do you boast all day long you who are a disgrace in the eyes of God you your tongue plots destruction it is like a sharpened razor you who practice deceit you love evil rather than good falsehood rather than speaking the truth you love every harmful word oh you deceitful tongue surely God will bring you down to everlasting ruin he will snatch you up and tear you from your tent. He will uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous will see and fear. They will laugh at him saying, here now is the man who did not make God his stronghold, but trusted in his great wealth and grew strong by destroying others. But I am like an olive tree flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. I will praise you forever for what you have done in your name I will hope for your name is good I will praise you in the presence of your saints and so David is saying like Doeg you're trusting in your own ability to bring you wealth and sustainability and peace but I'm trusting in God and I'm gonna let God deal with you because um, so Doeg was right he was basically tattling on, on Ahimelech and because none of Saul's men wanted to kill the priest because he knew, they knew that they hadn't done anything wrong but Doeg was like no no I'm gonna use this situation to further my own my own um, my own estate and David is like what you did was wrong like you needed to trust God to look after the situation because that's what I'm going to do he says in verse 8 but I am an olive tree flourishing in the house of God and the cool thing about olive trees is they're really hard to kill that's one of the <laughs> I thought when I read that passage I'm like I had already planned to come and sit in a tree today but it was really cool that there was a passage on the passage was about trees but olive trees are known to live like 2,000 to 5,000 years uh, <laughs> They are drought resistant, fire resistant, like they are long living, healthy, resilient trees. And so when it says, but I am like an olive tree in the house of the Lord. So I'm gonna stay in the house of the Lord. I'm gonna stay close to God because it says, I will trust in your unfailing love. I'll trust in your unfailing love. I will praise you and I will put my hope in you and I will wait on you. So I'm gonna wait for God to look after things. I'm not gonna take care of you because we're not actually sure what happens with Doeg. It just sort of, I and I looked, I'm like, I don't see where somebody deals with Doeg. So we're kind of just trusting that God worked it out and we believe that that's what he does because if you flip over to Romans and I'm gonna flip over in my Bible here to Romans 12 yes flipping I know this is really there we go Romans 12 says in verse 17 do not repay anyone evil for evil be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone it is if it is possible as far as it depends on you live at peace with everyone do not take revenge my friends but leave room for God's wrath for it is written it is mine to avenge I will repay says the Lord on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome evil. Do not be overcome with evil, but be overcome with good. And so in this passage, we are reminded that you might be 
somebody might have done something against you. Maybe it's at work, maybe it's a coworker, maybe um, someone in your family, and you're like, how am I going to get them back? But this passage is saying, you know what? You did something wrong. I'm going to stick with God. I'm going to I'm going to praise God. I'm going to put my hope in God. I'm going to trust God in this situation. I'm not going to retaliate. I'm going to trust God to look after it and to deal with it. And that's what sometimes it's so hard when you're waiting for justice and we're waiting for God to look after things. We just need to trust that God in his timing will bring the justice that we are seeking because that's what he says, right? When so many passages, it says the Lord will bring the justice because he is the only just judge. And even though we see some really messed up situations and we just see some really hurtful things or we experience hurtful things, maybe at work or at home, and we're just like, God, do you not see me? The worst thing that you could do, well, one of the worst things is to take things into your own hands because we don't know the whole situation. We need to hand it over to God, hand over the situation, hand over our feelings, our anger, our hurt, our grief, and just say, God, this is this is what's going on. Will you deal with it? And then leave it with him. And secondly, don't commiserate with people. Sometimes we just look out for people and we're like, I just need to share this with someone. And then but really, are we looking for help and how to deal with it? Or are we looking for commiseration, right? Someone to commiserate. Oh, yeah, like you were done wrong. And, and you need like, you know, bring down fire and brimstone on that person. Like, and that makes you feel better for what you experienced. And that actually isn't healthy. We need to be praying for our enemies. We need to be praying that God would move in their heart. And he would bring peace in the situation and restitution and restoration and redemption. And that's a tough thing to do. Like we acknowledge the hurt, we acknowledge the grief, we acknowledge the pain, but we need to give that to God. We need to make sure that we aren't seeking out to be affirmed, affirmed in, <laughs> in our grief, but actually just say, God, you need to make things right. And I know that's a might be a tough pill to swallow, but that's what the word of God says. And I know that when we, try our very best to do what God says he always works things out he just says will you trust me and that's how uh, that passage ends is I will put my hope in the Lord I will wait on God to make things right so in the waiting if you have been wronged or you're hurt something awful has happened uh, can I just encourage you to trust God today and give that over to him all aspects of it there's a little chickadee right there <laughs> so cool um, and trust that he's gonna work it out, okay? So let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, some of us who are watching today have been wronged and uh, just, we need your help. We need your help in that situation. And so would you help us to give it all over to you? The anger, the hurt, the pain, the grief, and trust that you're gonna work it out and you're gonna deal with that person that hurt us or wronged us. And so Lord, help us to pray for them, help us to bless them, and Lord, would you bring your peace to our spirit in this? We need your help in doing that because we cannot do it on our own. We need your Holy Spirit to help us. And we ask this in your name. Amen. All right, my dear friends, that's it. That's all. I hope you have a great day and we'll see you soon. Bye.